Hey folks, this is the Digital Imaging Channel. I'm Will, and today we're going to identify some signs that you have microfilm deterioration. Why do you care about film deterioration? Well, you should care because if your microfilm is deteriorating, you could lose some legibility, some of the data on your film, you could lose the entire roll of microfilm and all the images and data on that roll. And typical roll contains about 2,500 frames. So that could be 2,500 different pieces of information that are gone because your film deteriorated, decayed, basically just got destroyed. Now, something about microfilm is most people that have a collection of film have one copy. The microfilm is the single record that these people have. And if that record's gone, there's no backup to this data. So if it gets destroyed, that's it, you're done. Very important to understand if your film's deteriorating, how you can potentially stop it and what to do. The first sign of microfilm deterioration is called vinegar syndrome. And just like the name says, if you smell vinegar, this is what you have on your film. It actually does smell like vinegar and that's how it got the name. So if you walk into a room that's storing your microfilm or you open a single box containing a roll and you smell that vinegar smell, that's what's going on. Your film has vinegar syndrome. Now vinegar syndrome affects acetate based microfilm, which is microfilm that's pretty much made before the 80s. After that was polyester based film and that's not affected by vinegar syndrome. So if you have older film and older collections, there is a chance that it could get vinegar syndrome. But if you have layer based film, you know, after the 80s, then it's it's most likely polyester based film, which will not be affected. Now, once microfilm has vinegar syndrome, the plastic on the film becomes brittle, the film shrinks, it starts to buckle, and basically it just starts degrading. And this is like a disease that actually can spread to other microfilms. So the action steps you need to take if you smell vinegar in your microfilm collection is first identify which rolls have the vinegar syndrome. Now, a quick way to do that is go through, let's say you have a collection of 100 rolls and you just smell it in the room that's stored in. Go to each roll, open up a box in a different room, smell it and see, does this this one smell like vinegar. If it doesn't, separate it. If it does, you want to actually quarantine this film. You don't want to let it spread to the other roles. At least for now, you want to keep this disease only on the currently affected roles. Don't let it spread. And the next thing you can do is actually duplicate the role. So if you have a vinegar syndrome affected role, you can actually duplicate that physical copy, which would then provide your role that does not have that vinegar syndrome. So you could try to save the data that way, or you can scan the film. That would be something you can do digitally preserve the data so that you don't have to rely on the physical copy anymore. Next is redox and redox is when you see orangish, reddish, yellowish spots appear on your film. And it's basically the oxidation of silver on your microfilm because microfilm back in the day was created using actual silver. So the oxidation of silver caused these spots to appear on your microfilm. Now, if you see redox, you can actually do something to stunt the spread of it. And it's called brown toning. Brown toning is a treatment. It's a chemical process that actually changes the silver on the microfilm to silver sulfide. And that may clear up some of the blemishes and at least prevents future redox on that film. Now, you probably don't have a deep tank processor just hanging around so you can put your film through it with the chemicals you need to do this process and stop the redox, but there are companies that still can do this. And if you can't find a company that can do this brown toning, or you just think that's too much of a hassle, you just wanna get rid of the film in general, you can also have this digitally scanned so you don't have to deal with the physical copy and the degradation that can come from that. Lastly, we have embrittlement, and embrittlement is when the elasticity of your microfilm becomes compromised and it basically becomes brittle, less flexible, and can cause snapping and breaking. Embrittlement actually affects both acetate and nitrate-based film Film, especially as they age. So if you have different types of film, like we were talking about vinegar syndrome, which affects acetate base and brittlement also affects acetate and nitrate based film. So as they get older, this can happen to either one of those. If you find that your film has this, you cannot reverse the effects of embrittlement. However, there are solutions that will allow your film to be a bit more flexible so you have the time to either duplicate it or digitally scan it to preserve those records before it's too late and the film is not usable at all. Those are the three main types of microfilm deterioration. You may be thinking, well, how do I prevent this? How do I mitigate it? And one of the key aspects of degradation or deterioration prevention is actually proper storage. And wherever you store your film, here are a few key tips to keep it fresh and keep it from potentially uh, deteriorating. First, maintain a temperature that does not exceed 70 degrees Fahrenheit or a relative humidity of 50%. You wanna pack your film tightly to prevent oxidation. You'll wanna store the film in a dark location and limit the exposure to light. Keep your storage area clean and don't put other chemicals in there like paint or something like that. So if you're storing your film in a closet, don't put paint in there or cleaning chemicals or things of that sort. Keep the microfilm segregated in a pure room. And then if you do actually need to paint the room, let's say you're doing some remodeling and you're using chemicals 
chemicals, cleaning, painting, whatever. Remove the film from there, do what you need to do, let it completely dry and clear out, and then put the film back in there. Those are the three main ways that microfilm deteriorates, decays, and basically gets destroyed. So you'll wanna keep an eye and nose on your microfilm to detect any signs of deterioration. If you do find it, act fast, call us if you have questions about this, and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to keep getting videos like this. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.